Welcome to the Dom Sub Devotion Podcast. Every episode of Dom Sub Devotion is an authentic reflection of our real life in a loving 24 7 DS marriage. If you crave the passion and intensity of a power exchange dynamic inside of a deeply loving and intimate relationship, you found the right place. You can always find more from us in the show notes and at infinitedevotion.com. Thank you for listening. Today's podcast is going to be a little bit different in that I have an idea that I've been unpacking and I want to work through it a little bit here out loud with you. And what I'm going to ask of you in today's episode is really to reflect back to me what you feel to be true or challenge me on any part of this that doesn't seem like it comes out with clarity. Sure. Because, you know, this episode is really going to be for the men, for dominant men or men who aspire to be dominant men, and also for women who want to understand more what makes up a dominant man and what the challenges are. And I'm always in search of the truth, right? This is my highest value in our relationship is the truth that we align our lives individually and our connection, our dynamic, our relationship with what is true. Right. So in search of the truth, I'm always looking first and foremost to make our lives better, my life, your life, and our relationship. But then also the ability to communicate that with clarity so that we can teach it to other people through what it is that we're living. Because that's the hard part about what we do, right? It's for us, life and relating and like all the stuff that we talk about has actually gotten to a point where it's very easy and it flows very easily for us. Yeah, absolutely. Which also <laughs> sometimes makes it hard to communicate about it. Well, it does make it challenging because it's so nuanced and sometimes so indiv individual to us that it becomes challenging to put it into words. Right. In a way that helps other people learn from it. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So... This is something that I really think can be powerful for men and women, both understanding this concept that I want to talk about today, which is the necessity of surrender on the part of the dominant and the way that we go about seeking freedom as men. So, where I want to start with this is this idea that in any relationship on its face we think that a relationship is between two people right it's me and it's you yeah and what i think gets missed is that there are actually two relationships happening between us at in every given moment not just one tell me more there is the relationship that exists between us in the physical, in the logical, in the sexual. Yep. And then there is the relationship that exists between us in the emotional. Right. And by not separating those two things apart and recognizing that they are two different things, they're two different relationships that are happening simultaneously we miss a lot of really important potential for connection, for intimacy, for desire, for all of the things that we want out of conscious relating, out of dominance and submission, out of kink, out of sexuality, out of love and closeness. Like all of this requires that we recognize that both of these relationships are happening at the same time. Absolutely. And in, in recognizing this, we, 
we have to see how there is a, a give and a take, a leader and a follower in both of those relationships. Because if we, if we don't accept the reality that there is, that there is a giver and a taker or a leader and a follower, then we remove the differences between us, also known as depolarize. Yeah. And we lose the energy, we lose the connection, we lose the, the intensity, the passion. And things become flat. Yeah, the circuit's broken. Right. So, in that realm of the physical, the logical, the sexual, this is where I as the man need to be the leader and you as the woman, the follower. I'm the giver, you're the taker. Mm -hmm. And then on the, in the other one of those relationships, the emotional relationship, you are the giver and I'm the taker. Like, let's, can we switch that language to giver and receiver? Sure. That because take can be wrapped up in negative connotations and it's really not taking, it is receiving. Right. Good catch. Thank you. I apologize if I interrupted the train of thought there. So we've got to have both of these relationships working and we have to have them working in polarity, acknowledging the fact that we're not the same. The way that sex is for me is different for you. We don't approach any of it the same. We approach it differently, opposite. We don't approach emotional things the same way. They're opposite. Right. And we need to understand, recognize, and appreciate that opposite nature mm -hmm. in both of those relationships. And we have to cultivate and bring intentionality to both of those relationships that are happening between us. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be able to do that in every moment. So the how we do that, I'm going to set aside here for a moment and talk about the other piece of this and come back around to the, how do we cultivate that? Because, and speaking to men here, to the masculine, so to speak, men are always in search of freedom. This is a, just a, it's just a truth. Men are looking for a place that we can rest, that we can set down our burdens and feel okay to not need to try so damn hard. And that's what we're after as men. We're always seeking freedom. So in that search for freedom, we approach the, the finding of it from either from the seeking of comfort and, or the avoidance of discomfort, or we seek freedom by building strength so that we can conquer the things that make us uncomfortable and be free no matter what the circumstances are. Like I can. I can feel the truth in that. Keep going. So I want to talk about this search for freedom by seeking comfort and avoiding discomfort, because this is what almost everyone does. Yeah. And understandably so. Oh, absolutely. We, if we're looking for freedom, there's always an easy freedom available for us. Mm-hmm. And seeking comfort <laughs> means we can create a comfortable situation for ourselves where we can feel good, feel okay, feel free for a moment. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the things that came to me with this, it actually came up this morning as we were doing our workout together, which I had us running sprints this morning. That was fun. I love doing workouts together outside. I remember hearing someone say that over 90% of people never again for the rest of their life after the age of 30 run at full out sprinting speed. I guess that's not surprising to me. Why would you, <laughs> unless you're getting chased by a wild animal or intentionally sprinting? Right. Or, or like some sort of sports. Sports or playing. Right. Think about kids. Kids run full speed all the time because they're right. playing. Obviously. Yeah. But, but we don't we don't intentionally play all the time as adults. And thinking about it from a dad playing with the little kids, you're not sprinting. Not usually. They're not going to catch you if you're playing tag. <laughs> right. So this that's just a good example of the search for comfort because well sprinting at full speed is uncomfortable. We both felt the discomfort this morning of running all out like with everything that we've got yeah high heart rate tired legs right it it's uncomfortable yeah so in this search for freedom that we are always after as men we can find these little moments of freedom in the avoidance of discomfort yeah or in the choosing what feels comfortable in the moment yeah and there are a lot of examples of what it means or or the way that we can choose to seek comfort F ways big and small yeah healthy ways unhealthy ways and it and i wouldn't even say healthy and unhealthy i would just say comfort is comfort and what has it been less than a hundred years in, in all of human history that we've been able to step in a shower inside of our house and set the temperature to the exact temperature that feels good to us, to our body in that moment on that day and, and have like a nice, perfectly warm, comfortable shower. It, yeah. But why wouldn't we do that when it's available to us? Right. I was more so going the, down the lines of coping. And so I don't always like to label it like good and bad or whatever, but I, all of those, the way I see it can be a stepping stone. If you actually are able to recognize that it's coping and you're trying to fill the void essentially, and it's still empty, it's still not getting you to probably the freedom that you actually seek. So I don't see like any of the, let's call them maybe less successful ways because they all are your opportunity guiding you more towards true freedom. Well, so you have different ways of seeking comfort. One of them is numbing. Yeah. And when I say numbing, I mean, porn, I mean, video games, I mean, substances, you know, drink that beer, scroll on your phone, watch TV, it's distraction. It's spending two hours on YouTube because you just keep watching the next video and the next video and the next video or TikTok or whatever it is that people get buried in. Yeah, there's a lot of easy ones. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's booze and it's substances and a lot of people, the ways that we waste time, these are seeking freedom. And they're just what they are. It's not seeking freedom. It's taking little bits of freedom that are easy. Yeah. But that's just one of the ways that we seek comfort. We also seek comfort by avoiding discomfort, right? By not sprinting. Yeah. Like. Maybe you go to the gym, but you don't really work that hard. Or maybe you avoid uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, I can see that this is where that like nice guy thing comes from. Trying to 
feel free by giving the part the female power <laughs> talking is hard female partner um what she wants thinking mm -hmm. that's going to create some peace and freedom right it's it's in the avoidance of discomfort of saying no to her or speaking up for what you want as a man yeah or for what you think is right or for your own needs because you're trying to avoid the discomfort of upsetting her so yep. like there are all of these little emotional ways that we can also seek comfort and avoid discomfort not dealing with our pain like not doing trauma work all of these are different little ways that we keep ourselves comfortable but at what cost sometimes you i would think you can't even know at what cost well and this is one of the points i wanted to make here is the cost is your life right and i don't mean like is your heart still beating no. life i mean like feeling alive right because what happens if we continually seek comfort and we continually avoid discomfort and we take these little moments of easy freedom every time that we make a decision that we're going to do the easy thing and avoid the necessary but challenging thing we shrink our life we get smaller we have we're avoiding what's true in favor of what's easy we're avoiding what's right in favor of what doesn't make us uncomfortable and so now we continue if we go down that path you know chart this out one of the things i like to say is follow this to its logical end continue that for 40 years doing what's comfortable, avoiding what's uncomfortable. You end up with a life where you've, you're avoiding so many things and you're only doing the things that feel easy and comfortable. That there's not much left of a man who lives that way. Yeah, it sounds um, boring is the first word I came up with. <laughs> like no spark exactly no fire left in his eyes no edge no no not at all very passive and, i see that a lot actually and there are a lot of men that live this way and again they're doing it because they're seeking freedom which is the natural like desire of a man to find freedom and our world our society our culture makes it very easy to just choose the easy route because it's always right there it's on your phone it's in the fridge it's in the snack it's in the drive through you know it it's resting it's relaxing it's it's avoiding it's you know it, it's taking the easy route and it, the easy route is easy because it's the easy route right because it's not hard it's not challenging but this just leads to this ever shrinking life because this is uncomfortable i'm going to put that over in the area of my life that i just don't look at i don't touch i don't deal with and if anything tries to get there i either shut down or i lash out to protect it or whatever but this is kind of over here now because i don't want to have this uncomfortable conversation or i don't want to work that hard and so you just, if you keep tucking things away into that and choosing the easy route as a man, you end up with very little left of yourself. And this is how we end up as the kind of the caricature of the weak man sitting on the couch, sipping a beer, overweight, talking about his health problems and the weather, because there's nothing left. Right. So I, that brings up a question for me out of curiosity. Yeah. Because we've talked about testosterone for men in the past. It's the male hormone. Yes, I know women have some testosterone. Men should have more. 
So I'm curious if anything you've read about it, um, you know, there is the physical, like, workout. That's the way that some men have to get physical because they have a novice job. Some men are more physical um, because of their trade job, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. manual labor. So I'm curious around if there's more of that co- testosterone in a man who keeps up the physical labor type job versus the um, inside less physically um, engaging job. I get what you're getting at here. And I think it's a little bit bigger than that. It has to, we have to zoom out a little bit more than that because a big part of what gives us our testosterone boost as men is what gives us a serotonin boost, which is winning. It's conquering. So, you know, an, an easy life does not give us the opportunity to feel as though we have conquered as we have won. So what you're getting at, what my question is here is like, how does just the brain conquering, um, or maybe how does the physical body conquering (laughs) using the body and the mind? I would imagine it plays into it. I don't know well enough specifically to answer that question. Okay. But it was just a side note. It is a, it is a good transition to the other way of approaching freedom which is to choose to confront what's uncomfortable, to choose to confront what is, what we don't maybe want to, doing things we don't want to do. And in doing that, gaining this inner strength to be able to handle this thing that before we didn't want to be able to handle. We didn't want, like, I don't necessarily want to go sprint and like be doubled over breathing, gasping for breath at the end of it. It's not comfortable, but in doing it, I make myself better. I make myself stronger. And when we approach the search for freedom in this way, one, it's delayed gratification. Yeah. We can't have it right now. We have to do something hard to earn that freedom. But the freedom of having a physically fit body is a different freedom than the freedom of avoiding discomfort from exerting yourself in a way that makes you physically fit. Because one of them is abundant. One of them is, has been conquered. It's been earned. It's been worked for. And one of them has been taken. And this also plays out in quote unquote, doing our work, confronting the traumatic things that happened to us when we were little boys the ways we were treated by our mother, the ways we've been hurt by women. Instead of avoiding those things and trying to craft our lives and our relationships in ways that make us able to avoid looking at those things that are uncomfortable. And we do this expertly, by the way, as men, crafting our lives in ways we can avoid and not have to look at the things that make us emotionally uncomfortable. Yeah. And I would say one of the biggest ways is living a full life where you really don't get a lot of time to probably do what you want to do as a man. Right. Well, that's a, it's a really good point of how we avoid Mm -hmm. by just overloading our schedules with obligations or burying ourselves in our work 
and our vices to keep us too busy to deal with anything. Right. So if we seek freedom by pursuing and confronting the uncomfortable and even actively avoiding comfort, this is why taking cold showers is such a powerful thing for men. It's not just, I take a cold shower and I have this physiological response. No, it's also, again, two different things going on at the same time. It's also building the emotional, mental strength to handle yourself in discomfort, to actively choose what's uncomfortable. This is why testosterone, by the way, coming back to your point and question about that, was never a problem. I believe in, in the past because like our culture, society, life just consistently made us uncomfortable and we were always having to work to earn our comfort. Now comfort is easy. Comfort yeah. has never been easy in the history of humanity until present day. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty easy to just go to the grocery store and pick up something to eat. Mm -hmm. Or go through the drive through if you don't even want to bother cooking. I don't even think about that, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this approach to freedom, again, follow this to its logical conclusion. If we chart this forward over the next three or four decades in our life, and we continually confront what makes us uncomfortable, we choose not to take the easy comfort. We build a different kind of freedom, a freedom that we've earned rather than a freedom that we've taken. And this allows us, if we take, if we choose this approach, this allows us to feel as though we deserve the freedom that we're feeling rather than just having it. Well, I would challenge even, I, I can understand why you're saying they're both freedom, but I would even challenge that when you're trying to take it, you aren't actually experiencing freedom. You can't experience freedom without actually doing the work. Well, right. That's very well said because that's the kind of clarity I, I knew you would help bring to this because the, the easy route is not actual freedom. It's perceived moments of freedom and true freedom means that you're living a more abundant life. You like, rather than putting things away in, in the corners and not looking at them and getting smaller and smaller and smaller by looking for the things that you don't want to deal with, bringing them out into the light and challenging yourself to overcome them both physically and emotionally. Yeah. You create not just freedom and the ability to feel free in every moment of your life from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, regardless of circumstance, we can be free. Absolutely. And then we can expand our lives. We can grow our lives. We can participate in the abundance of the universe in whatever way is true and right and real for us as an individual. And we can go out and make our impact on the world because we're not living in avoidance of the uncomfortable. We know that we are going to be free no matter what happens because our freedom exists now in here, not from what we've taken from out there in those little moments, those little stolen moments of cheap freedom. Fake freedom. And this is how we continue to grow and expand and have lives that become more abundant as we get older, where our everything about our life, our ability to be in relationship, our sexuality, our finances, our emotions, all of this can get better and better and better and better and better. And I don't think there's an upper limit to how much better it can get when we approach it this way. 
Right. And I want to put a point on when we say abundance, it's not just money. Money is just one form of abundance. Right. Abundant in the nature of that there's always enough and there's always more to be had of whatever it is that we seek. Yeah. And what I would say is maybe underneath it all is aliveness. Because like Eros, that's your life force. And when you're abundant there, mm -hmm. that overflows into all of the other areas of life. And when I hear you speak about this, like I just keep seeing this guy shrink. And as like, I'm just imagining a generic man. And I just kind of also started picturing his body like contracting and shrinking. As he get gets older, it's just like, becoming smaller and smaller because there's no mm -hmm. life force to live yeah. for to hold that upright posture like because our physical bodies are a representation of our internal state right exactly so this is how we be alive you're doing a great job at the unintentional um transitions for me today this is how we continue to be more and more alive and keep that spark keep that aliveness keep like and not just keep it but have it expand and grow as we get older as we get wiser as we get better and we don't lose our edge our edge gets sharper I have to say this, as you are just speaking all of those words and I'm looking to, into your eyes, I'm just so fucking turned on right now. And I want to, I want to say something to that because we've shared plenty before about where we were, our like sex life wasn't what it is now and the desire didn't flow how it does now. And you were also working in a job that started to become a soul sucking, a life force sucking you weren't i was taking the easy right you all the weren't easy freedom the cheap freedom yeah and it wasn't that you were like overloading your emotions about it on me necessarily but i still felt it in you you were not excited to go to work you were not feeling excited about anything and then that played into the rest of our lives and i want to share what i want to share here is when we when you started putting your efforts into this business and you started to like see this thing and then it was like there were certain moments along the way and i saw the spark in your eyes i felt that in my body it was turn on for you in a whole new way that i hadn't been experiencing and so when I see you excited for what you do and I experience you in all of your fullness, that only makes me want you more. And it's fucking sexy. Did you hear that, men? <laughs> well, I'm not even done with this podcast, but I think I want to be done with this podcast. Now. But this, thank you, because that, that is what this gets to be. Yes. And you did it again with the great unintentional transition back to how do we do this in relationship in acknowledgement of the fact that there are these two different relationships happening between us in any given moment. So again, the relationship in the physical, sexual, logical, mm -hmm. and the relationship in the emotional. Both of these have to be tended to between Absolutely. us, which means if we want to make this work in relationship, we have to make it work within ourselves. I'm nodding my head <laughs> for those of you who are listening. <laughs> we have to make it work within ourselves or we cannot tend to the relationship in in true alignment with what polarity requires of us if we haven't tended to it in ourselves. And in order to tend to it within ourselves, we have to confront what, that which is uncomfortable in ourselves. 
Yes. It's only by confronting what's com uncomfortable in ourselves that we can tend to both the physical and sexual and the emotional inside of ourselves. And as men, what is uncomfortable for us in terms of the physical and sexual? It's claiming what we want. It's speaking up for what's right when it's going to make waves. It's, it's avoiding our drive. It's losing our edge. And when we avoid that because we're seeking comfort, we aren't properly tending to this piece of ourselves. So to tend to our sexuality means, and to tend to our physical bodies, which are the same, like you cannot have a healthy sexual expression and have an unhealthy physical body. They are the same thing. When you're, when you are in a healthy sexual expression, you're going to have a healthy body. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. And absolutely everybody has, um, sexual work, if you will, to do there because the expressions come out just like our belief systems and from our early life experiences as well and i like i've experienced the difference in you in all of that yeah i've experienced it in myself and myself <laughs> so we have to do the uncomfortable thing we have to work our bodies we have to confront the the ways that we've lived in an unhealthy manner and bring our bring our physical bodies into the best health that we are able to we have to deal with our sexuality and come into acceptance of our sexuality we have to understand what is true and be able to speak that truth when it's uncomfortable which, by the way, means that as a dominant man, you have to be connected to something beyond yourself. We have to recognize that there is something bigger than us, a truth, a reality that is bigger than us, or else this expression of truth can only be coming from our humanness from our be driven by our whims and our maybe more carnal desires which aren't bad they're a good thing and they're necessary but if they're expressed without a connection to the truth people get hurt right and we have to do all of that work around coming into a full ownership full agency of our bodies of our sex of our truth of the truth and then what's uncomfortable internally, again, we're tending to these part, these two different parts of us, what's uncomfortable in the emotional, it's those hard conversations. It's when your emotions get chaotic or how about what's uncomfortable when you are feeling big feelings of upset at me because of something that I did. Um, let's also add in there. Yes, because it's not just about me. It's about your own comfort or discomfort with your own emotional expression in life. Because men still have one. Right. And the, the feelings in inside of ourselves that are present, especially the uncomfortable ones. Yep. That we're carrying into our present from our past. Yep. Any ways that you've been out of control in life, going back to childhood. So again, conquering these things, standing face to face with our pain and choosing to overcome it rather than avoid it. We have to tend to our emotional selves because I can't have a healthy emotional relationship with you if I am not in a place where I can receive your emotions. Right. And I can't receive your emotions if I'm all gunked up in my own. Right. 
And again, I've experienced the difference between the way you used to show up, not being able to handle mine, and now being able to handle mine and asking for all of them, always. Receiving all of it. And when, also, when I when I really did that work for myself and I, I was able to lead myself to a point where I could handle and not just handle, but appreciate and welcome all of every emotion and feeling that you have. First of all, your emotions started to feel like energy to me, like love to me. And I say this to men all the time. You like every man knows that there is a absolute cargo ship full of energy in the emotion of a woman. Yes. And I want to put a point on this because it's really easy to um, associate emotion with the emotions that you maybe don't like feeling. But when we say emotion, emotional expression of the woman, um, you also are getting her joy, her happiness, her like the playfulness, all of that energy is made possible when you accept all of the range. Yep. It's not just speaking to receiving rage and anger and frustration and grief and sadness from the woman. It's all of it. And when you can receive it, for me, again, I have to do my own work here, but it's also allowed me to access the bigness of the excitement and have just more fun in life too. Like I keep saying, I get, I've, gotten more fun <laughs> the older i've gotten right it's this is all related right because if if as a man you hear receiving all of her emotion as she's just going to crush you with all of this overwhelming negativity that's your pain speaking because if you can't accept all of her you're not going to get all of the good parts either right so not only did was I able to now receive all of you, give you the permission to feel all of what you feel, to bring all of everything that you are to me, I was able to now recognize and, and receive all of that as energy. Yeah. Like, I'm energized by it. I'm filled up by it. Mm -hmm. And then when I, like... When I was able to tend to that part of myself, to drop those walls around my heart so that the emotional part of our relationship could work this way, where you can express and I can receive, guess what started happening? I realized I can receive this energy from anywhere as, as much of it as I can get. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, what used to feel like threat to me when I was full of my pain, when I hadn't done the uncomfortable things, when I had chosen to no longer seek the comfort of avoiding that emotion, but instead chose to do the uncomfortable work of opening up my heart. Now, I am able to support an unbelievable number of extremely emotionally expressive women and it only fills me up right when the version of me that was seeking comfort in the emotion in my own emotional self shut all of that down because i wasn't i wasn't able to handle it and what i did was i shut off my access to the life force the eros and the the energy of what is available to me as a man so all of this inner tending that I've had to do to, to live a life that is intentionally uncomfortable, to be able to claim the kind of strength that allows me to feel free in every moment of my life is what's allowed me then to come to a place where I can bring all of this into relationship. Right. 
And this is how we make relationships. Dominant submissive dynamics, marriages. This is the answer to that question that has driven me of how do we have deep, close intimacy, which is emotional, right? And intense, passionate, physical sexuality with the same person. This is how. It's by bringing, by confronting the uncomfortable, by looking for freedom from circumstance rather than freedom in avoidance of discomfort. Opening up the heart. Like the, that's the uncomfortable thing emotionally for men, right? Right. It's the uncomfortable thing is being able to be with the emotions of others. Yep. And with the emotions of ourselves to be able to receive and feel and not shut down or lash out in defensiveness and dealing with the discomfort of working on my physical body, dealing with the discomfort of taking ownership and having a healthy expression of and an appreciation of my sexuality. All of this is the uncomfortable work that's led to me being able to play my part in creating a connection that allows us to have both closeness and passion. Right. And like, I also want to make a point to share that, um, for those listening who are like, oh, wow, I've got a lot of work to do. Like, how do I get there? What I've heard you share um, in, in just response to the men that you've worked with um, is it, it just takes the starting of really taking your life back, right? And the the sparkle that's possible in men, the spark, <laughs> I don't know if we want to call it sparkle, but um, that drive, I think is really easy to access when you start looking at your life as I can take this back, I can take control of it, taking responsibility of it and putting one foot in front of the other day after day, like that energy starts to feel real and life giving really quickly. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong at all. And this is why responsibility is the first step. Like we have to choose own self-ownership. We have to choose to drop all of the victim labels and the identities we've assumed that have put us in the position of being out of control mm -hmm. and acknowledge the fact that we always have a choice. Right. So then what becomes possible and this is really the big point because again w back to this where i began here we're always searching for freedom as men we want freedom and what some men when they go through the shrinking process of avoidance of discomfort or, yeah avoidance of discomfort and seeking the comfortable is they will eventually come to the conclusion that it's just not possible resignation right they give up they give up on thinking that life can be what they be maybe used to believe that was available or what they sought or desired they just give up yeah and that is what breaks my heart mine too that's what breaks my heart for men and why i'm so fucking driven to help men see this that it is possible like we can live this life we can live it in ourselves and we have to live it in ourselves first because when we do like you you say this all the time i i don't just want to put words in your mouth but that you wouldn't be who you are if it wasn't for me no you can put those words in my mouth because i've said them <laughs> and that's not to say anything other than the fact that if I hadn't done my work and tended to both of these pieces of me, the, the, the physical and sexual and the emotional, we cannot do this without having both of those equally strong in ourselves. 
Absolutely. I have to be that because as the man, as the masculine force in a relationship, I have to lead you to everything. Because the initiation, the, the starting point is our, the man's taking of action. Everything else moves from there, but nothing moves in a healthy, in a way that supports this kind of love and passion, this kind of emotional connection and physical connection. Mm -hmm. That only works in one way. There are other ways to get through life. Right. But if you want this life that continues to get better, where the sex gets better, the love gets deeper, the passion gets hotter with every passing year, the man has to be the one to start, to lead, to initiate all of that action, which means initiating it inside of yourself and doing the work on what's uncomfortable about yourself. And you do not get to avoid the emotional. Right. Because then I can bring that to you and I can say, this is what our relationship is going to be like. Yep. And I'm going to take us here. And there were lots of times that I was doing that and you were kicking and screaming saying, it's uncomfortable. I don't want to. Um, yeah, kind e of. Even when you wanted to, it was like, it was challenging, but I continued to lead you towards what I knew was possible for us. Right. And yeah, I mean, I want to share this again, because this happens to us on a regular basis. We're out on Wednesday night at a live band, having fun, dancing, engaging with each other. And some woman, I don't know how old she was, but I, I couldn't hear her as maybe as much as you can. She said she'd been married for 50 years and, and was just getting divorced after 50 years. Right. But she like came up to us from across the park and said she had been watching us interact and she was I, I can't remember her exact words but she definitely like we stood out in the crowd and we're just being ourselves so in love with each other and it's not just comfort love it's exactly. passionate love right and that just shows itself and i share that because this isn't like a bragging moment. This is like, it is that real that other people, like we stand out in just being ourselves. Right. Because we're being ourselves, because right. we're able to be all of ourselves and neither of us are living in avoidance of anything no. anymore. And if, if we find something, if we find a place where there's avoidance, where there's resistance, we look for where it comes from, what needs to happen yeah. so we can let it go because those things only get in the way of allowing this energy to move between us. Again, right. in both of the relationships that are happening between us in every single second, the emotional relationship and the physical relationship. Right. So, you know, rounding this out, dominance and submission, this is where the whole point gets missed around dominance and submission when people think it's only the physical and they miss the fact that it is also an emotional relationship and it has to be, or it cannot be healthy. Right. It cannot be. I won't, I won't even say, I won't even say that it can be truly a dominant submissive dynamic if there's not an emotional component to it because it's being it's something else and it's not something good or healthy if there's not both of these relationships happening because I heard someone say recently that he was taught that there's no place for love in dominant submissive dynamics because love corrupts the authority <laughs> and I told him that's absolutely wrong in every possible way because Love informs the authority. Love is the check on the authority. Love is the, it's the necessary balancing factor to keep authority from becoming tyranny. Yeah, there, there's a whole conversation there. 
I and I believe that the desire to experience life through dominance and submission is a deep emotional desire. And when it stays in just the physical, this is where it's maybe just in the physical act of sex in the bedroom. This is what we're getting at is sure that's fun and there's exchange going on there power play going on there um but when you open yourself up to it your hearts and actually experience the emotional that's where the real life gets to experience the freedom the liberation the love the passion in such a more deeply authentic way right because what do you want as a dominant do you want a submissive who's just going through the motions of a of an obligatory obedience because you told her to mm -hmm. and because she thinks she has to mm -hmm. or do you want to feel her wanting to give herself to you because of how she feels about you right like those are two ex they're they're two completely different experiences right one of them is like that might feel good in the moment but it does nothing for me and there's no it doesn't mean anything right and the other one like nourishes your soul right and it's like it's empty right so it's like you're you're chasing something you're trying to fill a void um but when you open your heart as a man like don't get me wrong submissive has her own work to do absolutely but when you open your heart to as a man you actually feel the polarity at mm -hmm. play in or, the emotional realm or the lack of it like, exactly and if, that's that's the flip side of this too when we tend to these parts of ourselves we're going to make it of we're going to make everything available to us and we are also going to know when it's not there right and when it's not there it will not be tenable or tolerable to us to live in the absence of an emotional connection yep and i know we've we've had our like going in and out of that in and out of that which is part of the process mm -hmm. right like it takes a while to get to where i feel we are where we feel it all the time so i hope this has been helpful for our listeners and watch and viewers to see maybe more deeply into how this works inside of a man and why we need to tend to and acknowledge the emotional we need to step into our strength we need to take responsibility and we need to actively choose to confront that which is uncomfortable in order to find freedom that is enduring yeah that's present in your body in every moment from now for the rest of your life and has the opportunity to grow and expand like this is what i want for men this is what i've gotten to experience through my own commitment to myself and it's what i've gotten to bring to you which has then made it possible for me to experience you as a completely different person yeah. partially because i'm able to see what and receive more of what's always been there and partially because you've been able to s set down your own need to control because you feel me being in control of myself right so again if men want more on this my course becoming a dominant man is available on our website and this is something where i walk you through the process that i went through for myself in this journey to my own inner strength and also we work with people in one-on-one -on -one coaching and uh, we have other programs that are available from time to time so reach out to us if you want help with this if this freedom is something that you seek and you need help support guidance this is what we do and I really don't believe that anyone does it better than we do. So we'd be honored to help and support you however we can. And thank you for watching and listening. Yeah. And thank you for bringing the truth. <laughs>